fire in the fireplace or the wood burning stove on a cold winter's day brings an awful lot of enjoyment. Many of us already have our wood in for the winter and some of you still may not have it all there and you may need to get some more. Dave Merculier is with us today on Oklahoma Gardening to share some ideas and tips with us on what is a good buy and a good way to take care of wood if you're trying to store your wood uh, in preparation for the rest of this winter. Dave, it's really good to have you on today's program. I'm real, uh, real glad to be here, Rick. Dave is Assistant Extension Specialist with the Department of Forestry at OSU. And Dave, uh, you've done uh, a program recently in Tulsa on uh, wood consumption. Tell us a little bit about uh, what we're looking for for purchasing wood, what's a good buy, uh, uh, good ways to store wood, and share some of these ideas with us, if you will. Ray, before we really can discuss uh what a good buy-in in, in, in wood is, we really need to focus in first on the, the three types of, uh, the three stages of burning that wood goes through in a fireplace or a wood stove. Uh, the first stage that, that wood goes through in combustion is a stage where the moisture is driven out of the wood. Basically, it dries out the wood. The second stage is when the volatile liquids and the volatile gases are burned, and then it turns into charcoal and burns in that form. And I, I think by realizing that, it really focuses in on the need to, to burn seasoned wood from an efficiency standpoint. If we burn green wood that has a lot of moisture in it, what we're doing is we're spending a lot of energy in that first stage, you know, driving off the, the water in the wood. And we're spending a lot of time drying that wood out before we're getting any usable heat out of it. Well, then I know that if, if wood's been cut for two or three weeks, it's probably seasoned. Uh, how, how do I know if, if it's seasoned? Well, a lot of that's going to depend on the form that wood takes, whether or not it's split or not and how long it, it, it's been sitting in a stack out in the, uh, out in the environment. Uh, wood will dry out in Oklahoma with our dry summers uh, in about six months to a year. Uh, you really should, should uh, store your wood for at least six months before you burn it. So two to three weeks really isn't sufficient to dry out wood. A lot of the wood that we cut, particularly if we cut it uh, uh, during the growing season, it's going to have a lot of moisture in it, in some cases up to 100% moisture. The moisture content of, uh, of green, of, of, of a lot of the green woods will be anywhere from, from 50 to 100% moisture content. So if I see an ad in the paper that, that says wood for sale, so much for green, so much for season, which is usually more for season, or if uh, someone's driving by and they've got wood for sale, it's probably to my advantage to go ahead and spend a little bit extra money for seasoned wood. but. Uh, should I just take their word for it then it's been cut off for six months? Or? Well, Ray, more often than not, it will, be, uh, it will be worth your while to spend a little bit more money for seasoned wood. And the way that you can tell whether or not a load of, of wood is, is seasoned is to look at the ends of a, of a stack of firewood, and you'll notice that on, on seasoned wood, you're going to have a lot of checks, a lot of cracks in the ends. Uh, this piece of wood here is, is, would be considered well seasoned. It's had the amount of time it, it takes to dry out to the point where it's contracted and, and, uh, and checked. So look for checks. Uh, also, it's real important when you're looking for seasoned wood to look for split wood. The reason being is when you split a piece of, of firewood, uh, you open up a lot more surface area to the, to the air. Sure. And you allow it to dry out faster. Okay, Dave, now also I noticed that uh, wood is advertised for sale by the rick or by the cord, but I understand there's some new changes in this. Uh, the reason that the Department of Agriculture uh, has, has come up with a standardized volume measure, and that being a cord uh, compared to the rick, is, is the fact that the traditional unit of measure in Oklahoma, the rick, is a non-standardized unit. Uh, a rick is, is defined loosely as a stack of wood which is four feet high by eight feet long by the length of a stick of firewood. And as we all know, the different types of heating systems can require a different length of wood. That's why wood is cut to different lengths. Uh, a wood stove is not going to take the same length of a stick of firewood as a, as a fireplace would. So then what's a cord? A cord is a volume measure, a standardized volume measure. It's the amount of firewood that you can put well ranked and well stowed in an area that's four feet wide by four feet high by eight feet long. Okay. So if people are purchasing wood then now, they need to know that they, they purchase it by the cord instead of by the rig. And in fact, a cord of wood may be more expensive than a rick of wood then. It more, more often than not will be more expensive because than a rick of wood. More a wood. Full, a full cord be. Uh, can be anywhere, uh, can be up to three times more wood than a rick mm -hmm. of wood. Yes. 
Dave also know that uh, there are some people throughout Oklahoma, particularly the eastern part of the state, that have acreages uh, that they could manage these woodlots for uh, maybe some added income or some extra income. Uh, what are a few of the tips that a person may want to keep in mind if they do have a wood lot that they'd like to, to bring under management? Basically, just common sense rules need to apply when you're cutting wood out of a wood lot. You're probably going to want to, depending on your landowner objectives, manage wood for its highest value. Mm -hmm. Firewood doesn't tend to be the highest value product that you can get out of most eastern Oklahoma hardwood stands. Uh, saw timber is probably, uh, well, not probably, is definitely more uh, more valuable than firewood is. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for good crop trees to help out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to put more growth on trees that, that have more potential for providing higher valued uh, saw log. So cut out uh, the poor formed, uh, defective trees, trees that have uh, insect or decay damage, trees that have forks in the bottom 10 feet, uh, trees with excessive branching, and also look for species. Uh, the, the valuable species in eastern Oklahoma for saw logs are the white oaks, uh, the walnuts, the hickories to a certain extent. We try to try to to favor those as compared to species like blackjack oak, willow, elm, and some of the other lower quality saw log species. And so sort of use that as an added income. Right. Well, Dave, I really appreciate you being with us today on Oklahoma Gardening and sharing some of these tips on what's a good buy in wood, what to look for in seasoned wood, and also a little bit about woodlot management. And I know our local county extension offices also have some programs that a person can usually attend or information on woodlot management if a person wants to do that. And I also want to encourage our Oklahoma Gardening viewers that uh, having a fire in the fireplace and the wood burning stove is enjoyable and a good way to heat your home, but yet we want to caution them that if have the fireplace checked, the stove checked, and be sure that there's a lot of uh, good common sense also used in safety mm -hmm. in, in the enjoyment of wood. Thank you for joining us today on Oklahoma Gardening. Thank you, Dave, for being with us. Thank and you. Be sure and join us again next week on Oklahoma Gardening.